Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is going to be a quick video to go over how to do view, a real basic overview. Um, this should be really easy, view is actually pretty straightforward to use and you'll be able to do some cool stuff. Okay, and I'm going to be using sort of the CDN version of view, it's an easier way to get started and you know without having to introduce all these random build tools and things that kind of make it complicated you don't need to use npm you can just do it all just with html and javascript files so i'm just going to create a new folder for a new project so let me create a new folder we'll call this project 2 because it's the second one i have in this folder and what you're going to do is you're going to create two files an index.html and a app.js exclamation point, oh, that's the app.js, go into the index.html, hit exclamation point, hit enter, and ta-da. So we need to do two things. We need to bring view into our project. So I'm gonna copy from my previous one, the view CDN. Actually, just copy both of these. Okay, so project two. index.html, let's copy these right here. Okay, so this script tag right here brings in view. Don't add a defer keyword for that one. For some reason, it just won't work if you do. Uh, but do add a defer keyword for your app.js. Okay, and this you can get off the view website, just look up view CDN, or you can just pause the screen and just type it out from what I have there. Okay, but that's it. After that, all we need to do is create a div. I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to wrap your whole project in one div. So wrap this whole HTML thing in one div. And we're going to give this div an ID of app. Cool. So, and that's it. Okay, we've connected our HTML. Now we're going to go to our app.js and we're going to say const um, app. So this is our, our application. Equals a new view. Oh, nope. New view. Uh, why does it do that? No, new view. Escape. Then parentheses, pass in an object. And essentially everything you're going to be doing, so what what is going to happen is we're going to type in a property called L. That means what's where does this instance of view target? So it's going to target this div here. Uh, not this div. Let me close that one out. This div. So everything in this div is going to be targeted by this view instance. So we're going to type L, and we're going to type in an ID of app. So it's going to target the element with an ID of app. So that's the first piece. And then we're going to have our data object. Here you're going to put any data that you need for working with. Okay, so literally every piece of data is going to go into this object. So we're just going to create a hello property and call it hello world. Okay, and just to test it out, so you can see the first cool thing you can do with view, it creates what's called data binding. And it follows a pattern very similar to the older version of Angular, but a lot more lightweight. So it brings a lot of the good parts without a lot of the bulk of the older Angular, which is really nice. Uh, because you'll see some of this is pretty nice. So what I can do is I can, let's say, create an H1. And inside of it, I can interpolate things right into my HTML. So I want to interpolate that property called hello. So it's going to see here, see these two curly brackets, see hello, and then it's going to look at my data to see if there's a property called hello, which there is, and it's going to just pl pl plop the value there. So let's try that out. I'm going to right click here, open with live server, and see hello world. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So again, we have our app instance, and then I'm passing in data. So that's pretty neat. Okay. And other cool things you can do. Let's create a variable called show. And again, you don't have to, you can call these variables whatever you want. We'll make it true. Okay. Oh, no need to go there yet. Let's create an H2 that's called peekaboo. I wanted to make it hide and hide and show. So what I can do is I can do a v show. These are called directives. V show, 
and then you choose what variable it's linked to. So I'm going to choose the variable show. So it's going to look in my data, look for a property called show, and see if it's true. If it's true, it'll show. So again, I go back over here. I see peekaboo. But if I change it to false, it disappears. Okay? That's that's what's cool about vshow. Now, I'd like to be able to change that variable, so maybe I want to create a button that changes that variable, that toggles, toggles that peekaboo. Okay, so let's go back to my HTML. Let's create a button. I'll we'll just say hide and seek. We'll see what's on the button. And we need to create a function for this button to click on. So we're going to go back to my view instance object, put a comma, and we'll create another property called methods. Okay, and then here is another object where we can declare all the functions we'd like to use in our view instance. So we're just going to call this one called uh, hide and seek. Okay, now when you define these, you do have to use this syntax function. Okay, you have to define your function that way. The reason is you need to use this. This needs to work a particular way for this to work. So arrow functions are uh, not not your go-to here. Okay, so hide and seek. So basically whenever you click, th whenever this hide and seek function gets run, all I want to do is take this.show, that's the instance, so this is the view instance, this.show, and I want to make it equal not this.show. So it'll make it equal the opposite of what it is currently. Okay, cool. So there's my function, very simple one. That makes life a lot easier than writing out something really long in jQuery. And then I can just associate that button by doing v on colon, then the type of event, click equals hide and seek, because that's the name of the function. So whenever you click on this button, it's going to go look in my methods to see if there's a function called hide and seek, which there is. So now if I go back to here, and I click on hide and seek, peekaboo. Okay, so see that was pretty easy. Okay, that's the beauty of you. It just makes some of these basic things really easy. Now let's say we create an array. Do, 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 do. An array. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I want to iterate over this array, and actually we should call this like R, I can do something like this. I can say H1, or I'll say H3, V4 equals num of, hold on, let me just confirm that, I always forget the conjunctive word, ah, in, okay, in. So it should be num in r, okay, because that's the array, and this is what's going to look in our data for an array called r, and then it'll iterate that, and each time the thing in the array is called num, so I do that, and then we just interpol interpolate num. Again, I do it right in my HTML, now watch what happens all the numbers have iterated. See, so you have really nice little features that make life real easy. I'll show you one more feature, and then for the most part, you can pretty much build most of what you'd probably like to build uh, in these early stages. Now, input fields, like input type equals text. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to use vModel, which binds it to a variable. Okay, we'll call it input. So let me go back to my data, create a field called input. Set it as an empty string. And then what I'm going to do is also in my hide and seek function, we're going to just console.log that value. So you can see that you can easily just grab that value now. This dot input. Okay, so if I start typing it, let me open up the console. If I just type in cheese, I do a hide and seek. See, it does a thing, but see, it also console log cheese. 
because that variable is bound to what I have in the console. Okay, so that is that. Um, yeah, that's the basics of you. So again, just to kind of recap, there's other things you can do. Um, so we talked about vshow, so if you conditionally show things. v4, so you can loop over elements. Um, there's also vif, where certain elements just won't show up, which is actually technically is kind of the same thing as vshow. Um, again, you can put your data and you can interpolate it into the HTML. Uh, you can create functions that refer to those pieces of data pretty easily. All you have to do is, again, create this new view instance, wrap a div in this app ID. Again, you can create multiples of these view instances, but it's probably easier at first just to wrap one big div across your whole HTML, give it ID app, and just kind of practice this pattern first, get used to it. There's a lot more stuff you can do inside this view object. You could read the view documentation, but with this you can do most of the things uh, you need to do, and then you can just use your normal fetch functions for any API calls, and life's pretty okay. So I'll see you guys later on. My name is Alex Merced, alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.